Welcome to track number two of the Mega Church. You know, there were people you think would not get married. Really, sometimes you just wonder, Lord, how can it be? But I have noticed and I've watched every single one of them get married, no matter how old. God has somebody for everyone. Yeah. And so I, 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 I realize that it is just important for us to focus on the Lord, continue to work for Him, and all these things shall be added unto us. Amen. 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 Can I have an amen? amen? There is somebody for you, somebody who wants you the way you are and how you are. You don't have to change for Him or for her. Hallelujah. Amen. And so, is that not good news? Yeah. Is it not good news to know that God has somebody for everyone? And so we need to just, you know, wait on the Lord and do His work. And so that is why I've come to Toronto here, not to teach you seven steps to supernatural prosperity, or 14 ways to become fantastically rich, or eight, eight, eight steps to a happy marriage. I'll leave that to Pastor Andy. <laughs> I have come to teach you how to have a mega church. church. I want you to have a bigger vision. Hallelujah. Because I know that as you have this bigger vision, you are going to be blessed. You know, I was telling somebody the other time, as he was working towards uh, his, um, his work he was doing, and I told him, you know, you are after money. And all these things. And I said to him, you carry on doing all this. Trying to get more money. Trying to get more of this. And the thing that you are trying to get will be coming to me. I will be getting them and you will be chasing them. Oh yeah. And it's true. Because as I have rather given myself to working for God, the things that people are chasing, I have found them just by me. I am not searching for them. And people are out there following them and the things are not being caught to. And they are just being added unto me. Oh yes. Oh yes. Some people think that traveling is a great, nice thing to do. If that is the case, then I have found it. Because I, I can travel every week if I want. I have somewhere to go and something to do. And somewhere to stay when I get there. And I will have enough money to keep me going in every one of those places. I stopped my... I've been invited to Pakistan, Ukraine, Durban, Malawi, uh, Malaysia. I get faxes inviting me. We are paying for everything. Come. And I have to stop some of them. I cannot go. I just cannot go. In fact, what I was thinking about in my room is how to cancel some programs. That's what I was thinking about upstairs. So that I, I just have more time at home. With the church at home. You get it? So if that is what somebody was aiming at, I am not aiming at that and I have it. If somebody is aiming at having any car in the world, I can have any car that I want to have. Not because I'm fantastically rich, but by the grace of God, where we are as a church, I can have access to any car, although it may not be mine, all I need to do is to use it, and at least you think it's mine, but I'm just I'm happy enjoying it. <laughs> Amen. And some people's vision and dream is I want to have this car and to have that and to work and to own that and to have this and to man, you can have a higher vision. No, I'm telling you something. Don't think to yourself that it's only me. Once again, that's an attack of the devil right on you, right there. Yeah. Trying to tell you that oh, it's him. You see, that is what keeps you out. Whenever you share something with somebody and the person says, yes, I understand what you are saying, but the person is not receiving what you are saying. When he's saying, yes, you see, but your situation is different, uh uh-huh, you cancel it. If I'm sharing with you about church growth, and you say, yes, but you see, Toronto, or I'm in Canada, uh, then you are canceling it immediately. Do not allow the devil to come in to cancel what God is trying to give to you today. Can I have an amen? amen? Can I have a better amen? amen? So we are studying the mega church. Amen. And we want to have a mega church by the time 
we are out of here and I tell you what we are going to have a mega church we are going to see a mega church I love Albi's vision Albi, when did you have that dream? few weeks ago God gave you that dream because of this company he wanted you to see a picture of what he was going to do and God is going to do it here you know when I became a pastor by the grace of God everybody rejected me you get what I'm saying all the big pastors threw me out and said this guy is a young boy he's nothing he's a foolish guy is dead and they threw me out everywhere I went trying to relate with people I was I had the door slammed in my face so by the grace of God I didn't have the example of anyone to follow I had to follow the most original example in the Bible and so you will find out that if for instance you come to Ghana which is where Lighthouse started you will find out that the church is a little different from most of the other big churches there in terms of what we do and how we do it and what we emphasize and so on and God has given me something that is peculiar he gives everybody something that is peculiar I don't have anything special that God does not do with others but I'm saying that everybody God gives everybody something peculiar and raises him or her up to be used in a special way now I believe that God is going to raise up the Canadian church Amen. in a peculiar and special way hallelujah, hallelujah. and God is trying to say to you that don't see maybe Lighthouse Chapel in Kumasi or Lighthouse Chapel in Australia you know we have uh, one in Sydney in Australia or don't see Lighthouse Chapel in New Zealand but see the vision that Albi came to show us a very large church with she said every color every age every type of person was there see it you will become what you are seeing you will walk into what you see when you drive you drive over the road you are seeing you don't drive over the road you can't see you drive straight towards what you are looking at I said you drive towards what you are looking at and so God was trying to give you that picture so that you can drive straight towards that thing. Amen. Powerful. powerful. I said powerful. powerful. He gives us visions. He gives us dreams. So that we can drive. That keeps us going. That keeps us going. You need a vision to keep you going. Amen. And that's why we started by looking at the vision. You need something that keeps you going. Amen. And I'm, I'm trying to tell you. You see all of you ladies how many ladies are not married here can I see your hand unmarried ladies one two all the ladies are not married there's no married uh-huh. one two married now, what's your name again Ejewa Ejewa okay and Sandra all right now and I don't know your name here Martha Mava Mava all right Mava is the form of Marvin is it the female form of Marvin all right. So Mava, Ejewa, and all the rest of you, huh? God is going to give you husbands. It's yeah. a minor thing. minor thing. When I got married, you know the question I asked myself: ah, What was I waiting? Well, it's, 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 I realize that marriage is just like a stepping stone. It's just an event on the way to the rest of life. And we make it. Ah, it is the event of the lifetime no 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 no. it's not are you sure yeah yes i'm sure marriage is good marriage is nice but it's not the, it's not that's not life it's on the way a part of life abby is that not so yeah because you, you think that it is the thing you are working for in this life to achieve in the name of the father the son and the holy ghost now it is on the way and God is going to provide for each one of you as you serve him hallelujah can I have an amen Amen. alright so ladies and gentlemen we are looking at the mega church and I'm just sharing with you from this book on the mega church and I want you all to read it when I go because I'm not going to read share everything with you but just some parts of it 
And um, so today, we, yesterday we looked at the vision. What was the first point I gave you? I wanted to give you the vision. Number one, the vision of what? The vision of a mega church. All right. And the next one is what? A vision that the church should be greatly increased. Okay. So I was giving you the vision, and one is you should have a vision that the church should be greatly increased, even though its beginning is small. Okay, greatly. Did I say small? Smallly increased. No. A little increase. No. Minor increase. No. Greatly increased. Next one. A vision that a house be filled. In it. And you shouldn't mind who comes to fill the house. You just don't make them leaders. But you shouldn't mind. Don't mind if they are not the type of people you would have thought. You get it? Don't mind if the mayor of the city doesn't come. The mayor of the city in my country where I come from does not come to my church. He rather came and broke down the walls of my church. So, so that is, so that is uh, don't worry. The president of, of Ghana does not come to my church. So I'm not thinking about them. I have the poor. I have the students. I have the little ones. I have the humble ones. And man, the church is working. And some of these little ones and humble ones are growing and are becoming mega and mighty. Amen. And God is going to do it over here. Yeah. How many of you pay first and best? Alright, now let me tell you something. How many sometimes feel that your first and best is not much? It's not a lot. She thinks, only, only four people think so. How many think that is a lot? Okay, so you neither think it's too small or too little. So you are in between. But God is going to bless you. And you are going to be able to give so much. Amen. You, the same person. Now, you can, you, can, you can know the extent of your prosperity by knowing how much you give. Amen. As first and best and offerings and projects and anything that comes up. Because I'm going to raise money from you this time. Amen. The reason is because I, I feel God wants you to prosper. Amen. You know, when I was coming, one of the things I was saying to the Lord, Lord, I need something to sow into. I want, because you see, anytime you have an opportunity to sow a seed, you schedule for yourself a season of harvest. Yeah. When you sow, you see, everything that you give into God's hands multiplies, including nothing. So when you put nothing into his hand, nothing multiplies. You have more nothings. And any time you, if, if, you, if we put seeds into this field here, we are scheduling for ourselves probably around August. A big harvest on this field. And if we put nothing here, we are scheduling for August absolutely nothing. And when I went to Maryland this time, for instance, the Lord spoke to me and showed me that the people in Maryland you know, anytime we're having a program or anything, you realize uh, you realize from their capacity that they are not able to give much you know and the Lord told me to help to break that thing this time to help them, and one of the ways you help yourself out of a situation is by giving poor people don't know that you have to give in order to, to schedule for yourself a season of harvest. Amen. Africa doesn't know that. And we have been receiving gifts. Aid. We have in Ghana, SIDA, Canadian um, International Development Agency. I'm sure they're bringing loads of money to Ghana. Who is getting poorer? Who is getting poorer, Canada or Ghana? Ghana? Ghana is getting poorer. Ghana is poorer than it has ever been since independence things are 7,000 times more expensive than they are over here 7,000 times because one dollar is 7,000 CDs and it used to be one dollar to one CD so it's 7,000 times more expensive to live in Ghana people are very poor the minimum wage of a Ghanaian now is about 60 cents American cents Huh? 60 American cents. And, uh, are you there? Yeah. A few years ago, in 1992, the minimum wage of a Ghanaian was $3. Yeah. 
1992. So we're just going down. Soon maybe I may be telling you that the minimum wage of the Ghana is 10 cents a day. Uh, but now it's 60 cents. So 60 cents times uh, 30 days is how much? You don't even work 30 days. You work about 20 days in a month. So 20 days times 60 cents is how much? $12. $12. That's the minimum wage. So we are getting poorer in spite of the fact that we receive so much aid, what they call inflows, donations, grants, gifts, and we remain poor. And in fact that we remain poor, we are getting poorer. Because the word of God cannot be broken. The Bible says it is more blessed. In other words, it is to your advantage. Those who give, it is more blessed to give than to receive. So as long as you remain on the receiving end, you are not at an advantage. I want to be a giving person so that I can be at an advantage. I don't want, and I had a convention in my church and I told the church members, I said, listen, remove yourself from that category of receiving people. A receiver. It's a bad thing. Join the givers. Can I have an amen? Join the giving community. I mean, you look at the world. Who, who is the receiving community and who is the giving community? Yeah. Africa is the receiving community. The giving community is Europe, America, Canada. They keep on giving and giving and giving and giving and cancelling debts. Now Ghana has become what we call a hippic country. You know what is hippic? Hippic is highly indebted and poor countries. Hippic. So we are now officially, we have joined Hippic. Hmm. What has it done for us? I say to people, look at Ghana. The north of Ghana and the south of Ghana. The north of Ghana is very poor. If the south is, south is New York and America, the north is poor. Alright, if you like. And the north receives gifts. In fact, it is very expensive to rent a house in Tamale, in the north. Because there are so many giving organizations, aid organizations there, doing things and giving things in the north. And in spite of that, the north has become poorer than the south. And become, it's continued to become more poor than the south. Why? Because it's more advantageous to be giving. For every student in the south of Ghana, every student in the north is free school. And in the south they pay. Everybody in the north has scholarship. All the giving. And still the north is going down, down, down. I'm going up to the north when I go back to Ghana. So giving puts you at an advantage. Yeah. Giving puts you at an advantage. Amen. I said giving puts you at an advantage. Amen. Giving shadows for you a future which involves harvest, Amen. which involves reaping. Amen. It programs for you a period of, la- of your time where you will benefit from your giving. It programs that thing in the future. Amen. And everyone here needs to program for its future a season of harvest. You need it. You're going to need it. You're going to need it. And if you do not give, right, you don't have anything programmed for the days ahead and for the months and the years ahead. Because you've been keeping everything, thinking that the more you get and the more you keep, you know, the safer you are. Can you imagine a farmer like that who, when it was time to sow his seed, he said, you know, I want to feel safe. And so he doesn't go out to plant his seed. And when it's harvest time, he sits there feel, wanting to feel safe. And there's nothing for him to have anymore. And so people are harvesting and he is there. And the next year again, he wants to feel safe. And what is happening? He's getting poorer and poorer. And his grain is getting finished. It's getting finished. And in the end, he has nothing. Because he said, I want to feel safe. So I, I believe that in this church here, and, and that's why I'm going to do it, not because we need it, but I'm going to raise my hand. I'm going to ask everybody here, by, according to your strength, students by your strength, workers by your strength, everybody to sow a sacrificial seed by the time we are getting out of this program. To help something. I'll think of something. I'll, I'll find some, uh, something to do. There are things to do. That is going to be a seed for, 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 for others. Believe it. I never do things that I, 
it, I, I'm not easy, it's not easy for me to pretend. You know, that's one of the things about me that you know what I'm thinking straight away. I'm not good at pretending. If I, if I don't practice what I'm saying, I can't easily talk about it. If I don't do it, I won't talk about it. What I'm sharing with you is things, the things that I do. Amen. Can I have an amen? amen. Alright, so I'm just telling you that in advance because I believe that God is going to bless you. Amen. Because Toronto, you are going to... Those of you who are struggling today, I predict that it's, it's a matter... It's just shadowed in the future. You are going to wonder how you, why you used to struggle in this town. Can I have an amen? amen. Wow. Okay, what's the next um, reason for vision? To affect... Jane Street, it's right into brackets, not Jane Street only, not only Jane Street, not only Finn Street, not only what well, Lawrence and what Queen Shepherd and Queen King and all those streets. And the, the name of your street, you write the name of your the, the, the big street near your house. All right. Now, are we going to do that? Great. I lay all of my burdens down. Have we finished? Was that the last point? What was the last point? The harvest is true. That's a vision. The, the vision to reap a, a large harvest. Is that not so? That's the next vision. To reap a large harvest. And a harvest is equal to Winnable souls. Amen. Winnable souls. Isn't that a powerful revelation? Yeah. Winnable souls are a lot. Many. It's nice to think about that. There are winnable souls. And there are plenty. Vancouver. Believe God. Your church will even be bigger than uh, Toronto. <laughs> You'll be surprised. Amen. Amen. Believe God. God is going to send you Chinese and Koreans and all kinds of people from all over. And don't be strict and say, I want this type and I want that. Don't want a type. Just want whatever God brings. And flow with it. Can I have an amen? amen. Next one is what? The vision of depopulating hell. And the next vision? Four lies of Satan, which are what? Everything is okay. You've made it. Have you made it? Is everything okay? Next one. This is how far. Is that how far we can go? Can we not go further? We can go. Next one. This is everything you can achieve for God. Is it true? Amen. Now, you drink coffee. Would you like some coffee? It's right here. Okay, wait, just a minute. I'll let you drink your coffee. Relax. Are oh, you are jealous of me because I'm drinking the coffee? You need it. Uh. All right. Okay, let me give you. So we finished that, isn't it? So now let me give you the reason. So the first topic was the vision. The whole overall theme is the mega church or church growth. Okay. Now I'm giving you the vision. The vision is greatly increased. Um, what? Greatly increased. Filling the house. Affecting the whole world. Depopulating hell. Overcoming the lies of Satan. Getting the winnable souls. Huh? That's a vision. So now let's go to the reason. Okay, so we've done the vision. The vision of the mega church. Or the vision for the mega church. And now, the reason for the mega church. Amen. The reason for the mega church. Okay. Now, number one. I'm giving you reasons. The first reason why we must have a mega church is 
to win more souls. Number two is to establish more souls in the kingdom. Number three is to raise up more workers. More workers. Church workers. Number four is to raise up more pastors. Alright? Have you got that? To raise up more pastors. How many want more pastors in the church? Huh? Ben, what do you think? You need more pastors, isn't it? Because once you have a pastor, you have a church. Is that not so? So the more pastors... Now, Lighthouse has almost 200 pastors now. Yeah. And so, when we have 200 pastors, you get it, that means 200 churches. We have almost 200 churches. So we have almost 200 pastors. So, the, the larger the church is, the more the pastors are. And the more there are pastors, the more uh, the church grows and the more the church is. And that's what God wants. Now, if you have a church of 200 members, will you have 200 pastors? You'll have how many pastors? Maybe one. Two. You get it? So, when we have a larger church, we have more souls, then there'll be more shepherds, more people like you working. Amen? More people to do God's work. More people to win the souls. More pastors. Hallelujah. So let us have that vision. Uh, that re- let's know that these are reasons for having a mega church. Amen. The next one is the next reason is to release special ministries into the church. To release special ministries into the church. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, as we grow, as we grow larger, amen, amen. and bigger, hallelujah, amen. there are more specialized things that we can do. For instance, you can have um, orphanages. I've wanted to have an orphanage for a long time. But now if we have an orphanage with a hundred little children, what is it going to involve, Araba? Susan, what is it going to involve? Yeah, hundred clothes, hundred beds, hundred bed sheets, hundred mattresses, hundred pillows, hundred plates, hundred cups, hundred spoons. And then the spoons. You, I, I don't know if it happens here. Have you noticed that your spoons and forks walk away from the house <laughs> have you experienced it you don't know where they go and how they go and your cups they just get finished I don't know who comes for them you know when, when we were younger I mean they used to say like people come for a party and so on is that a lake out there oh okay people come for a party and so on they, they put a, a fork in the bag and take it home you know, but if it happened to you in Canada, I don't think people do that here. You know, but they still walk away. So you have a hundred forks, spoons, and knives which are going to walk away. Hundred medicine, hundred, three hundred meals a day. Uh, three hundred meals. I don't thought about that. Three hundred meals, because you can't tell them eat once a day. They are not dogs. You know. <laughs> Our dog, we feed it once a day, you know, and you can't you can't just tell the dog to eat once a day. Uh, and what else? I mean, and hundred buses, I mean, hundred transports to school, hundred school fees, hundred textbooks, hundred exercise books, hundred pens, hun- people to look after the hundred children. Oh man, man! And to be able to do something like that, you've got to be really mega. Otherwise, you shouldn't venture at all. I've always discussed with my mother-in-law that I wanted to do it, have an orphanage, you know. And it's not, and there's a need for something like that. And not only is there a need, but there's a need for us as a church to help and minister to 
the poor and to people who are disadvantaged. Even if we can't reach the whole world, we can do something. And for the person who is affected, we'll be very grateful. Hopefully they'll be grateful. Not everybody is grateful. Amen. Amen. And I believe that as we get bigger and bigger, some of these things are going to be more possible for us to do. And we must believe God to have a larger church. Because the larger we are, these things become more possible. I will stand here and I will raise, I will say, listen, I want $50,000 to to buy a building in Ghana or in Nigeria or wherever we can afford it. And uh, we need $50,000 to buy a building to keep some orphans, 50 orphans. Okay? So now we've come to a meeting. There are 20 people here. 50 divided by 20 is how much? 25. So all I need is $2,500 per head. Okay? To buy the orphanage. 2005, 2005, 2005, 2005. No problem. But you bring out your checkbook and you just sign 2005. Without struggling, and the building is just bought there. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. I go to the church in Alaska and I tell them, listen, I want you to feed the orphans for one year. And it costs $100 to feed one orphan for one year. Okay? And I've got 100 orphans. So everybody give me $100. And they provide $100. Without struggling, you've got it. I tell the church in Saskatchewan, give us, uh, what do you call it, um, exercise books for the children <laughs> and pens. Is that not what you call it, Saskatchewan? <laughs> so, what? Saskatchewan. Okay, Sask- well, the same thing, Saskatchewan. <laughs> Are you listening to me? Yeah. And the more mega we are, the more able we are to do these kind of things. Hallelujah. And I believe that God is going to re- increase us, going to bless us, so that we are able to. And many of you see, that's what I keep saying, that you are the ones going to be blessed financially. I'm not looking outside, I'm looking inside. I'm looking at you and to you. I know that God is going to use you. God is going to bless you. You will rise up in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Recently, we, uh, when, we, when we had our, uh, when we were attacked two, three years ago by the government, and we wanted to build uh, a new church building, we needed a million dollars. I mean, I, I went around and I spoke to individuals, individuals, about ten people, or yeah, not ten people, or or a little more than ten, twelve people, or something. They just gave two hundred thousand dollars cash. They just gave it like that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, like that. And just a few people gave that amount of money. It's not a struggle. But we still had one point something million to get. So it took us a year to get all that and stopping every project for a long time to be able to do that. But we were able to do that. But some time ago, we would not have even thought about it. Some time ago, it took us a year to get a hundred thousand dollars. But a time will come when we will be able to do get ten million dollars to do work of God worth ten million dollars. But the time is going to come that we are, as, like I said, we will have to buy buildings here. Yeah. Yes, we have to. Like we are trying to get our first building outside. I mean, Ghana in in Europe is in London, and that's costing a million pounds. That's not a small amount of money. Not a small amount of money. You get it? But God is going to help us to do it. And the more mega we become, the more we are able to do things for the Lord. Alright? So you have special things like orphanages. Another thing is you have special things like Millionaire's Club. That's another special ministry. But you don't have Millionaire's Club in a small group of students. Ben, do you want to be in the Millionaire's Club? Are you sure? Now the Millionaire's Club in the church, I gave them the name Millionaire's Club, even though many of them are not really millionaires, you know, but I believe that they are going to be millionaires in Jesus' name. Alright? And the Millionaire's Club is, are the people who want to give something extra. So we have a Millionaire's Club in New York, or in America. We have a Millionaire's Club in Ghana. We have a Millionaire's Club in England. You want to have one here. All right. How many think we should have a millionaire's club here? All right. We'll have a millionaire's club, a Canadian millionaire's club. (laughs) 
Alright? And it's a confession. Because when you stand and you say, I'm a member of the Millionaire's Club. Man! I said, man! You'll be surprised how God will raise you up. And what do the Millionaire's Club do? The Millionaire's Club, they give specially towards things apart from their first and best. And occasional projects that come up. I don't like doing fundraising so much in church often. But this millionaire's club, the chief of staff of the millionaires, will call me or I call him or her. And I say, look, we want to do this. And they say, okay, we'll do it. And so they call the millionaires and they do it. The millionaire's club in America, they just bought cars. These, you know, they bought a, a what do you call it, cars for the crusade uh, ministry. They just paid for it and just sent it. Uh, in Ghana, during our fasting recently, we had, you have fasting here too? During, we had this, uh, uh, during the fasting, um, I said to the people, we want to buy a bus so that we can use it for going to secondary schools to preach. We have a ministry called Leadership International, which is a youth ministry to secondary schools. So I said, Pastor Johnny, go to the place where they sell cars, the dealers, you know, we don't call them dealers. What do we call them? The roadside people. We tell the cars. <laughs> and I said, go and get one. Tell the guy there to release his car and to come with the car to the church. And I said, let the guy park the car on the church parking lot. So that we, when the car parks there, that's the end. It's not going to go back. Because I want to show it to the people that we're going to take, a, take an offering with it. So, I told the church that we were taking an offering to buy the bus. But I knew that offering wouldn't be enough. I asked how much was it? 55 million cities. So, after the meeting, I called the millionaire chief of staff. He's called Joyce. I said, Joyce, buy this car, bus, bus. Say yes, Bishop. That's it. A week, two weeks, they just paid for it. In fact, they had more than that. What the church could not do over two weeks of everyday offerings. <laughs> Because everyday offering did not get there at all. For, because the, the meeting was daily meetings for two weeks, every day. Revival. But the millionaires, in fact, they had 60 something. So when, when they finished praying, they said, well, then use the extra to buy loud speakers because they also needed to buy speakers and make some amplifier, etc., for their outfit. So pay for anything else you can pay for for them. And that, that's how the millionaires club. Well, in the Millionaires Club in uh, London, they just paid, you know, I'm on television in, in Europe. 25,000 pounds, the millionaires. They just came together and said, put us on TV. And they paid 25,000 pounds. Everybody gave 1,000 pounds, 20 of them. And we are on TV there. And we are solving. But, but when the church is small, you can't have a special ministry like that. Because the millionaires are not there. But as the church gets bigger, all these people are in the church. And I see those people coming into this church in Jesus' name. And someone said, when are they going to come? They are already here. It's you who is going to grow up. Don't think that it's going to be somebody coming from somewhere to do it. Like Pastor Larry was saying, let's have a millionaire's club here. If you want to be part of a millionaire's club, we can have a millionaire's club. It takes sacrifice. And as you believe that you are really a millionaire's club, God will gradually change your situation. I called a certain man and I said to him, Brother, God is going to bless you with more than you had even when you were in the world. Because he used to be in the world. And he said, Bishop, I believe it. And God is blessing him. Recently we were taking uh, the same fasting. You see, what happened was I, keep, I kept trying to raise funds and other people kept paying for it. I said, during this fasting we are going to buy a new mixer. And I asked Johnny, how much is a mixer? He said, 10 million or more. I said, find out. And he found out it was 17, 18 million. Then, I said, okay, so throughout these two weeks, as we take our offerings, we are going to pay, use that to directly buy this new mixer, which was our old man was called. As soon as I finished the service, this man came up to me and said, Bishop, I'll pay for the mixer. So whatever offering you get, use it for something else. And he just brought a check, pa, paid for it. And that was it. Oh yeah, he just paid. So then I was confused. Now what do I do now? So I came and I brought the bus idea. Then the millionaire's club also took the bus. And then we were there. 
<laughs> Hallelujah. So as the church grows, are you listening to me? As the church grows, you have the millionaires. And the millionaires club is a powerful means that solves problems. I say it solves problems. The last time I was in Toronto, I wanted to give you people an opportunity to be part of the Bible uh, school. Did, did we do that? Did, did we do it? Was it done? Was it done? How many people did? Who was in charge? How many people did? About three or four. Yeah, about three people. And that is a hundred dollars for the whole year. You get it? Now, if a church, we have a church which can have only three people who can give a hundred dollars for the whole year, God needs to help the church. <laughs> Because even in a hippie country, are you hippie? Yeah. Even in a hippie country, people give powerfully much more than this. Amen. It's true. Okay. It's true. And I believe that many of you, even who are students, you need to sow seeds yeah. today and now for the future, to program for the future, unless you don't believe the Bible. Unless you don't believe, that, that's a different thing. Then you are out. You are out from now. But if you believe, you program it for yourself. I'm a giver. I give. Our, I make our church give. I make our church. So we support a scripture union. I went to sit at their program and they will have a scripture union. That's where I learned how to do Bible verses. And I asked, they were doing fundraising and they were, they were struggling. And I didn't, I don't like people to see what I'm giving. Them. So after the program, I just told the man, we'll, we'll give you 10 million. This was some years ago. So, because that's where I was. That's where I benefited from. And we just paid. They couldn't believe it. I said, we paid for it. And we paid. Recently, we gave a truck. You know this big truck for crusade? We gave it to a church. I just said, I just went to the office with a key. I wonder what we were doing. I said, this is a key for your crusades. Because they have crusades all the time in rural areas. They were startled. I said, this is the key for your, your truck. So the truck was parked outside. Monday morning, they just drove there and said, give it to them. And we got another, we have another one. We gave them one. Long, big truck. One pastor called that pastor. He said, do you know the price of the thing that this man came to give you? Worth over 250 million cities. We gave it. Someone said, ah. He said, no, too much. No, one day, you don't be angry and jealous. If you see somebody giving us a plane one day yeah. or a helicopter, yeah. Yeah. we are scheduling for ourselves harvest. Amen. We are programming things for the future. There are several ways you can predict the future, and one of them is by looking at your seed. I said there are several ways you can predict your future, one of them is by looking at your seed. Because if you see the farmer walking out there holding a seed, there's some, you can tell something about the future. About this hope is going to be full of corn. This hope is going to be full of pineapples. This hope is going to be full of mango trees. That's one of the ways you can tell the future. Many people want to tell the future. I'm going to preach how to predict the future. <laughs> Are you still around? Are you listening to me? Oh yeah. Another way you can tell the future is by looking at who you are following. Because if you're following Jesus, you're going to be like Jesus. If you have somebody who you are mentoring, somebody who you are, you are, dis, you are, you are a disciple to the person, you, we can tell the future. We could tell Elijah's future by just looking at who he was looking at. We knew that he was looking up to Elijah. And no, and, and, and you, I mean, you don't have to read the next part of Kings. You can just read up to the first part and you know the future. You can close the second part and just guess the future of Elijah, the servant of Elijah, and you know. So that's another way you can tell the future. Amen. By your seed and by whom you are being a disciple to or following or whatever, mentoring, whatever word you, you call it here. Amen. Are you listening to me? Yes. So, Millionaire's Club shall be released in Toronto. I said it shall be released in Toronto. 
It shall be released in Truno. And you have to rise up and begin to give sacrificially. And that will also release the mega church. And I believe that it is going to happen. It's going to be one of the great blessings we are going to have here. Can I have an amen? amen. All right. Now, uh, I was giving you some reasons for having a mega church. Is that not so? Yeah. All right. Now, the next um, reason, how many reasons do you have there? Five reasons. Okay. Now, the next reason for having a mega church is so that more prayer is released into the atmosphere. Now, do you people pray much? Do you people pray much? Hmm? Not so much. The more prayer, the more the work of God is done. Justin, do you pray much? Not so much. Somehow. Ah, but you pray much. You try. Pastor Larry, do we pray much? We could do better. Could you? What do you think? We could do much better. Koshi, do we pray much? Oh yeah, I know we could do better. <laughs> John, do we pray much? Still not enough. My brother at the back, we pray much. We pray much. Good. Now, the work of ministry is prayer. Amen. The work of ministry is prayer. And so, the more you pray, the more of God's work you are doing. Please let, let me let me give me a little volume so I don't have to shout. Let, let me just explain this to you, right? The more you pray, the more you release God's power. Listen to me. Look at me. I'm a young man. I'm a handsome young man. I could be running all over the world with a thousand million girlfriends. Don't you think so? I mean, I'm sure there are people who fall in love with me when I'm preaching. <laughs> Nadia, don't you think so? Yeah. You know so. Uh-huh. <laughs> now, what sort of power can control somebody like me? And bring me in my youth, not in my old age when I have finished sowing seeds all over the place. And did you get what I'm saying? What sort of power can touch me, arrest me, control me, and bring me to a place? There's some kind of power. We are not ashamed. Of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is God's power for salvation. What verse is that? AJ1, Sandra, my brother, what's your name? William, William, Ben, my sister, what's her name? Mava, Mava. Mava, Ernest, Araba, we are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. You see, that's why the songs you should you buy. No, don't bother to open your Bibles. I'll tell you because I'm being kind now. Next time I'll come, I won't be kind. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we are going to learn scriptures before we leave. I don't know how to make you learn. I don't know how to, but I'll learn how to do it. We need to know scripture. I hope you get a place for scripture. Just have a place 
you know, and just play the vital scriptures that are going to be coming as we're preaching. You've got to know them. I said, you've got to know them. Yes. Romans 1.16 yes. For we are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For it is the power of God. So, you, you get it. And all these scriptures are going to be given to you. You see that? All these. What does it say there at the top there? The top. A list of must know scriptures for pastors and shepherds. You must know it. You must know it. That's why I made it for you. So that you know it. And one of them is Romans 1. Now let me give you all the verses you must know in Romans. You must know Romans 1.16. Which says, we are not ashamed of the gospel. Okay? Of Jesus Christ. Another you must know is, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. What verse is that? D.D. Nadia. Romans? No. It's Romans. It's Romans. It's not 8. Romans? 3.23. 3.23. So write it down because I'm going to ask you as we preach it. Because I'm telling you now it's Romans 3.23. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Then for the wages of sin is death and the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord is what Nadia it's 623 you get it 323 then you go to 623 so I'm just giving you we are going up slowly so I started with 116 then 323 623 and then 6 1, I left 6 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue to sin that grace should abound? That is Romans 6 1. Is, it not, is that not so? Have you heard that verse before? What shall we say then? Shall we continue to sin that grace should abound? In other words, do I continue to do bad things because God is not condemning me? Because God is forgiving me? Shall I continue to sin so that grace should abound? Romans 6 one you must know it okay so six one then three twenty three six twenty three six one now which one is this there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus the songs there you must know them there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in eight one Eight one. So you got six one. You got eight one. You got three twenty three. You got six twenty three. You think you can remember that? Ah, uh, Mava, you don't look so happy. No, I'm saying you don't look so happy with the scriptures, but you're okay with the scriptures. Very good. So three twenty three. Now let me show you three twenty three and six twenty three. Many people get confused. Now, is it for all of sin or for the wages of sin is death? But I'll show you how to remember. 323 comes before 623. Is that not so? And all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Must definitely come. The sin must come. Then before the wages comes after the sin. So the wages of sin is death. But the free gift of God is eternal life. So that's the 623. So the 323 tells you that you've sinned. And then the six after you've seen tells you the wages. Okay? So let's all say Romans 3.23 together. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Let's say 6.23 together. For the wages, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. This is basic Christianity. 6.1. 6 one is what? Yes. Let's 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 check so we see exactly what is there. We are not ashamed of the what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? What shall we say then? That's it, correct. What shall we say then? What shall we say then? Then should we continue to do bad things because God is kind? Huh? Because he didn't, he didn't kill you the last time. 
Hein? Amen. So we continue. What shall we say that? Shall we continue in sin so that grace should abound? Man! Because nothing happened last time. Are we going to do it again? No. 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 That's what the verse says. So what shall we say then? What shall we say then? And you see, I tell you, do not learn it from the NIV, Living Bible, any of those Bibles. King James, Kojovi, King James. <laughs> Version. KJV, KJV. That is the way to learn scriptures. Because I tell you, these verses, I didn't learn them yesterday. No, 20 years ago. But the phrases stick in your mind. There is therefore now. You see, the, the English, there is therefore now no. You get what I'm saying? It's not, it's not straight English, it's old English. So it sort of sticks. What shall we say then? I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. That's what? 12.1. Of one, there is therefore now no. What shall we say then? Shall we continue? There is therefore now no. All have sinned and have come short of the glory of God. I say your mind works in groups, so you've got to categorize things and find a formula. Otherwise, you just ain't gonna remember. How many find it difficult to remember? But you're going to remember from today, okay? So one sixteen is what. We do you have that song at home? We are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Andre Crouch, please buy it. You'll love it. Play Andre Crouch songs at home. You'll be happy in Christ. Andre Crouch, and then also this song is sung by the Oslo Gospel Singers. If you see the Oslo Gospel, I'm showing you the CDs to buy. How many don't buy CDs? Because you don't have enough money to buy CDs. You can buy CDs, isn't it? Very good. I see prosperity coming to Toronto in Jesus' name. Because <laughs> there's going to be a millionaire star by the time we leave. Now listen. 6-1. What does it say? What shall we say then? Everybody say it after me. What shall we say then? Again, what shall we say then? What shall we say then? Question mark. Shall we continue in sin? Is it to sin or in sin? In sin. That grace may abound. So as soon as somebody tells you, what verse is this? What shall we say then? Then immediately you can 6 1. All have sinned. 3.23. And the wages of the sin is death. 6.23. And the free gift of God is eternal life. There is therefore no no that was that eight one now eight twenty eight eight twenty eight for we know you see that's how it's, it's that. for we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and to them who are the called the call, not just called, the call according to his purpose in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You see, so 828 is a powerful verse that you got to know, you got to know. And we know, and we know. Huh? And we know. So you got to know 828. And we know like for instance, if you propose to a sister and she says, no, I ain't going to marry you. The scripture that is going to comfort you is what? 828. <laughs> I said the scripture that is going to comfort you is what? 828. You, you, you need 828 to keep you going. Amen. It says, and we know that all things work together for good. To them that love God and to them who are the called according to his purpose. So when things don't work out, 828 keeps you going. Powerful. How many are excited about that? You got something to keep you moving. You thought this guy was interested in you and that he was going to call you. 
and he didn't call and you waited and you waited and you waited every sound you had even people next door coming to their house you thought it was the phone but the difference between the phone and somebody's door and when you wake up in the morning you feel so down 828 will keep you going I said 828 will keep you going and we know everybody say and we know know. that all things things. work together together. it it, it moves they they, 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 they join forces together you get it we know that all things work together together they they work this and this and that and that they work together for good to them who are in Christ Jesus to them that love God and to them who are the call according to his purpose okay now 10 9 and 10 10 9 and 10 you must know 10 9 and 10 is the scripture upon which you become a Christian Ten nine and ten. What's the lie? Yes. <laughs> For if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, God, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. <laughs> this is 10, 9, and 10. You got to know. You got to know. Hmm? 10, 9, and 10. Now, wh- 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 why is this verse important? Because it tells you how to be saved. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be and he just asked you, how can I be saved? And he, this verse says, thou shalt be saved. The question he asked was, this was the question we let, that learn, you must learn as a baby, not as a baby, but as a basic thing. Because people ask you, so what can I do to be saved? What am I supposed to do to be saved? But you've got a scripture which tells you, if you do this, and if you do this, thou shalt be saved. <laughs> what else do you want? So 10, 9, and 10, Araba, is what you need. Amen. So let's all say that together. That if is that how it starts? That if you see, so you must you must remember that if thou. So if somebody starts, is it that if thou? Then you then immediately you immediately start that if thou shall confess. You get it. What shall we say then? What was that? What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Huh? Six one, and we know that all things. Eight twenty eight. Eight twenty eight keeps you going. Write it down into bracket. Eight twenty eight keeps you going. Huh? Eight twenty eight will encourage you in Toronto. When your beloved doesn't ring you, and you thought he should have rang, or he should have called to tell you that he wasn't going to call. <laughs> Now Romans is, is basic. You've got to know Romans. So that's ten, nine, and ten. Okay. Now I want you. We are going to learn these scriptures, and we are learning them. Are you learning them now? Yeah. I'm trying to give you some help so that you can remember. Okay. Now my brother um, William, you want somebody to be saved, and the person says, "How can I be saved? What verse is going to help you?" Ten, nine, and ten. Ten, nine, and ten. Okay. AJ, what somebody feels condemned, he feels so bad. Which one is going to help? 8 1. 8 1. 8 1. Do you know how to sing that song? You don't know it? Let's sing it. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. For there is therefore. Now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from the sin and death. 
there is therefore now no condemnation of those who are in Christ Jesus. Now you can buy these CDs, the scripture in song. These, all these songs are on those scriptures. You, you, the Moen and so on, they have all these nice scriptures and so on. Okay? So it helps you. Hey, you're feeling discouraged, Susan. What verse is going to keep you going? No, just say the way I say 828 is what I need. Isn't it? 828. The people say, so what, is, what are these codes these guys are mentioning? 828. Huh? You go to visit somebody. Sammy, you go to visit somebody. And the person is, you know, he's living in sin with his girlfriend. And, and as he says, listen, you know, God forgives me every day. God forgives me all the time. And so I, I, I just, I'm just depending on the love of God. So I, I can just continue doing what I'm doing. What verse will you give him? No. 623. You're going to let the guys do worse. If you give him 623, you are telling him for the wages of sin is death. <laughs> and the free gift of God is eternal life. What will you give him? Sex? No, 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 no. I said, you go to a brother's house, okay? He's living with his girlfriend and he's not married, okay? And he's always committing fornication and all these things. And when you ask him, you got to stop, you got to stop. And he says, I can't stop, I can't stop. <laughs> Are you listening to me? Yeah. And he says, oh, the grace of God is, go is going to help me, the love of God. That's why I come in for the occasion all the time. Because I know the love, God loves me so much. What verse are you going to give him? 6-1. Let's say 6-1. What does it say? What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that the grace may abound? No. We are not going to continue in sin because the grace of God is there. Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody comes to you, Marva, and says, I want to be saved. I want to be saved. Then, somebody comes and says, I want to be saved. I want to be saved. What, what would you use for him? How can I be saved? No. 10, 9, and 10. 10, 9, and 10. What does it say? That if, that if, okay, that's how I remember. That if thou, if, if you like, I write this quote now. That if thou, when you say that if thou, you immediately start flowing. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. That if thou, that if thou, it is it that if thou shalt confess thy sins. Yeah. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth. You don't confess your sins to be saved. You confess Jesus to be saved. You can't confess your sins to be saved. If you confess your sins, you won't remember all. And you, you leave a whole lot that happened in 75. And a, a group that happened in 83. And a whole section that happened in 85, uh, 88 from June to August. You missed that one out. Your mind forgot. So you don't confess all your sins to be saved. You confess the Lord Jesus as your Lord to be saved. You cannot remember your sins. Yeah. That you, you generally acknowledge that you are a sinner. You do not confess your sins to be saved. You confess Jesus as your Lord to be saved. That if thou shalt confess all thy sins which thou hast committed, and thou shalt confess with thy mouth, and believe in thy heart that God has forgiven, thou shalt be saved. Is that what it says? Yeah. No. Okay. Now, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. Who can tell me 12.1? We're going up. You've got to know these scriptures in Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your, your body, bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, for this is your reasonable service. And then, verse 2, 
And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Huh? 12, 1 and 2. 12, 1 and 2. Now you go to somebody's house, and the person is always fornicating. What verse would you use? Now the person says, I can't stop. I can't stop. I want to stop. I want to stop. I can't stop. I can't stop. What do you say? 12, 6, six 1. Now the, the 6 1 is for somebody who is taking the grace of God in vain. Now the 12 1 is you are telling the person, you have to present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. In other words, it's just reasonable. It's not any extra thing. It's basic. It's reasonable to be holy. Now, everybody in Toronto is wearing earrings. The men are wearing earrings. The ladies are wearing cut-off skirts. Sometimes I wonder why people wear some... Because I, 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 I sometimes see some say, just take off your clothes. You just be naked. There's no need to have worn anything at all. And you have Christians who when I was in Colombia and I was preaching, you know, Colombia, they really dress naked. Man, man! So I was preaching, I said, you know, you have this and there, there they were. All of them sitting in the front and all over the place. The, the skirt. And when they sit down, you know, the skirt goes back in a way. Is that not so? so they sit down, the skirt is just here. You know, and as, when I was saying that, they were all trying to pull their skirt down. I said, why? Be not conformed to this world. Sorry. Be not conformed. Conformation. Conform means you become like. Everybody is doing it. Be not conformed. 12 2. 12 1 and 2. Everybody is doing it. So I, I got to do it. I got to do it. No. 12 1 and 2. Amen. Amen. 12, 1 and 2. Will you remember 12, 1 and 2? 12, 1 and 2. Be not conformed. Let's all read it or say it together. If you don't know it, just read it. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye by the renewing of your mind. Amen. Amen. So I think Romans, you are set in it. In it. Okay. Now, for we walk by faith. No, faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. What is that one too? That's ten seventeen. Ten seventeen. So you ten nine and ten. Because I'm going to give you a break to memorize these scriptures, and then we're going to come back and you sit in front here and we'll all ask you fire, you say ten one. 10, 9, and 10. 8, 9, 8, 8, 1, 6, 1, 3, 23, 1, 16. You think you can do it? Hmm. Okay. Now, you see, let me tell you something. If you don't know basic scriptures, there is no need for me to t- share with you complex things. Amen. Amen. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. We don't know basic scriptures. There's no need for me to go into complex things. Because we are building high and there's nothing under. And one day to just go, Kah! and it's gone up. That is why the, I did this in a crowd. Nobody knew, not, a lot of people didn't know scripture. That's what has brought this thing about. And I'm doing it everywhere America, here, London. I did it. I did the test with the pastors. And they failed. I did with the shepherds. They failed. They, were, they just went blank. The shepherds went blank. So I said, okay, I'm bringing this to you. Next time, it's going to be fire. <laughs> but I'm, I'm giving you tips. Amen. Okay. So now, 1017. Faith comes by prayer. Faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. So that's what, 10... 17. Amen. You got to know it. You got to know it. 
Romans 8 verse 6 it says to be carnally minded is death but to be spiritually minded is life and peace to be carnally minded is what? to be spiritually minded is life and peace now as many as are led by the spirit of God they are the sons of God that's what 814 814 Edna are we knowing the scriptures or we forgotten them okay so just remember all these ones we're going to come back to it okay as many as are led now next point on the mega church the next reason why we must have a mega church is what because more prayer goes on amen the next reason why we must have a mega church is because bible churches were mega churches bible churches were mega churches if we can turn to acts are you there book of acts are you there Acts chapter 2 verse 41 And then they gladly that gladly received his word were baptized And the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls And they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and fellowship And in breaking of bread and in prayers Amen How many souls were added in verse 41? 3,000 souls were added So there was already a church and 3,000 were added to the church. Is that a small church? No. That's a big church. Amen. Verse 43. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. Alright. Now in verse 47 also you see something. It says, Praising God and having favor with all the people, and the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Amen. So you see here that the church had 3,000 people added in one day and then the next time there were people being added to the church every single day. That is a Bible church. And we are going to have Bible, a Bible-like church. Yeah. We are going to have thousands of members in Canada alone. Yeah. Canadians are going to be saved. Amen. People who live here are going to be saved. Yeah. Believe it in Jesus' name. God is going to do it. God is going to use us. God is going to anoint us. We will, and it is not by our power or by our mind, but it is by the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. By the power of the Holy Spirit, our lives will never be the same. Amen. Amen. Believe it. Believe it. Believe it. Amen. Believe it. Amen. God is going to do it. God is going to give us a Bible church. We are not following our own ideas. We are following Bible ideas. Yeah. We are following the things that God has given to us. We are following the dreams that God has given to us. The visions. The Bible says in the last day, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and they shall dream dreams. Because of the Holy Spirit's presence. You have dreams because of the Holy Spirit. If you are a Christian, many of your dreams are from the Holy Spirit. Dreams come as a result of the presence of the Holy Spirit. He says, I will pour out my Spirit and you shall dream. You shall have visions. You shall see. You shall, there are times, one of the common times that I have visions is when I lay hands on people. Many times I lay hands on people and God just reveals things. Oh yes. It's because of the presence of the Holy Spirit. And so the dream that God has given us, the dream that God has given us for the mega church, amen, is a dream that we are going to follow. We are going to pursue it to its end. We are going to pursue it until we see hundreds of people gathering. And we will remind, we'll remind ourselves and ask ourselves, do you remember when we met in that, what is this place? I don't know where we are. Where are we? Jackson Point. Do you remember in Jackson Point what happened? When we were there, 
talking about the mega church because this church this camp is called the mega church camp this is the mega the theme for this camp is the mega church and i can remember many years ago when we had a camp meeting in the university of ghana and the theme for that camp meeting was the mega church i remember i don't know if there was anybody who was here then were you there were you at that camp meeting the mega church camp meeting it was held in the commonwealth hall the up there the lecture room a little room there and the theme was the mega church what i'm preaching to you is what i preached then and you see by preaching it i am preaching something that i'm going to get when i went to um what do you call it tulsa oklahoma i learned something from ken hagen you had a little sermon called god's god's garden and the sermon on God's garden is that whatever you preach is actually what you get back. So if you preach love to the people, you get love. If you preach growth, you get growth. If you preach loyalty, you get loyalty. That's why I have a lot of loyalty in this church. Because we teach it and we preach it. If you preach prosperity, you get prosperity. Whatever you preach, because the word of God is a seed. In fact, he said, there is no mystery to having what you have in a church. Just as there is no mystery to a farmer having a harvest of whatever he plants, there is no mystery, you get it, to whatever you experience in your church. If you experience church growth, it's because you are preaching it and you are teaching it. And that is why I'm preaching it. Because as I was coming here, I was saying, Lord, what are we going to do in Canada? And the Lord was showing me church growth, the mega church. God is going to bring a bigger church. We've got to have it in our hearts, have it in our minds. We've got to believe it. We've got to trust God. We've got to, and when, we, when I came there, Albi had had a dream just explaining the mega church that we are going to have in Canada. I say, this is not an immigrant church. This is not an immigrant fellowship. This is not a community of refugees. It's an international church with all nations, all colors, all people, all kinds. And God is going to do it. Amen. Amen. And, and John is the first sign of that thing. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Do you believe it? Yeah. Do you believe it with all your heart? Yeah. You'll be surprised at what God is going to do Amen. with us. You'll be surprised. When I went to South Africa and I saw them singing in Zulu. Huh? Zulu and Sutu. And here were all these Zulu singing. Lighthouse Chapel members. I said, man. God is good. It's amazing. Central Africa and public. You know, I saw a video that made me cry. It was from Sierra Leone. And here was a church in Sierra Leone. And I've never been to Sierra I've never been to Sierra Leone. I've never been. Here was, you see the banner and all that. And they were singing. And then they were singing a song. And then there's this little girl who came up. And saying, I want to dedicate her Sierra Leonean accent. I want to dedicate this song to the Bishop of Lighthouse. I want to say thank you for sending Pastor Eric Pemper here, sending us to start a church, Lighthouse Chapel here. We are really grateful. We are really blessed by the church and this and that. And I was just looking. I said, Man, I mean, look at this person. They are so happy to be in church. There is a church there. They are saved. They are singing. And I said, Give glory to God. And these are not Ghanaians, these are Sierra Leoneans. Sierra Leoneans. God is going to be. We are going to see a harvest of Canadians. Yeah. Pastor, you have something to offer. So offer it now. Lay the table and serve it out. I said, lay the table and invite the people to come. God is going to bring us a mega, mega, mega church more than you believe. You'll be surprised at why. You, Larry, you didn't come here for architecture or for computers. Oh yeah. That's not why you came to this place. You see, many of you don't even know why God brought you here. My father sent me to a school, Achimota school. I don't think I went to that school to um, study. I went there to be saved. That's why I got saved. That's why I got saved. My, my parents didn't teach me Christ. Salvation. I got saved in school. Sometimes my mother says, sometimes when she sees me on stage, because my mother comes to our, my church, church, she says, when she sees me, she says, is this my son? <laughs> is this my son? <laughs> she can't believe that it's her son. Oh yeah? My parents didn't teach me Christ in the way I know it. Of course they were Christians and all that, but more traditional Christian than you know, real born again Christian. 
my brother and my sister I went there to be saved I went there to be saved I didn't go to university just to study medicine I went there to be trained in the ministry I went there to meet my wife I went there to meet my main assistant whom I have been working with all these years I believe that God took me there to meet these people because a good person to work with is you can't buy it you can't buy men you can offer 10,000, 20, you just won't get a good person. In fact, the people who can be bought with that money are very bad people. <laughs> <laughs> you people don't know why you came to Toronto, and I came to tell you why. You came here to have a mega church, and God will do it. Don't believe God for things that look possible, believe God for things that look impossible. The Peter chapter 3. Verse 8 and 9 is a verse that I used to know. There are verses that I used to know. It says, But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. Verse 9, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness. But is long suffering to us were not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Let's all memorize Second Peter chapter three, verse nine. Let's go, ready, go. The Lord No, you start by saying Second Peter three nine. Ready, go. Second Peter three nine. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Amen. Let's say it again. Second Peter three nine. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness. But is long suffering to us. Let's say just about. But is long suffering to us. Word. Again. But is long suffering to. Again. Again. Let's say, the Lord is not slack concerning His promise. As some men count slackness. As some men count slackness. But is long suffering to us word. Again. Not willing that any should perish. But that all should come to repentance. Come to repentance. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Is the Lord kind towards us? Yeah. He is not slack concerning his promise. As some men count slackness. In other words, if you are expecting God to do a miracle in your life, Nadia, and the miracle is not coming, what verse would you quote to the person? Nadia, what verse? Person, you go to visit somebody's house. You see, I'm training you people to be pastors. How many want me to train you to be pastors? So I'm giving you some, I mean, how to minister to people. So you go to someone and the person says, I am... 39 years old and I don't know when I'm going to get married and I've been waiting for the Lord and the Lord has been promising and it's not coming what verse can you quote to the person and what does he say concerning his promise as as a man comes like in fact the verse before says uh but beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that a one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. For the Lord is not slack concerning his promise. As some men count slackness. Amen. But is long suffering to us word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. When you do not use the scripture the King James Version, you can't easily memorize, because this is not our normal English. To us word. We don't say to us word. We say towards us. But to us word helps you to remember. Amen. 
All right, what's the next point? One. The next reason why... So from this verse we can see that God does not want anybody to perish. But it's long-suffering to us with not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Is that not so? Is that not so? All right. The next one is that it is the will of the devil to keep the church small. Obviously, if anything God God is doing anything, the devil will try and do the opposite. Is that not so? The next one is that more missionaries are sent out when you have a mega church. More missionaries are sent out. Now how many know that it's expensive to have a missionary? Hmm? You know that we have a lot of missionaries in this church? Huh? Did you know that? And the Lord spoke to me about sending missionaries to South America. <laughs> More missionaries. You need a mega church to have missionaries. Because you can't pay for it. Is that not so? It costs money. So if you've got a small church, like let's say the Toronto church, I don't know how much your income is, but I don't know how much you people have as offerings, but be able to sustain missionaries here, missionaries there, etc. It's not easy. Amen. But as you have a mega church, you are able to do all these things. The next one is, you have more full-time pastors. Now, I believe that a time will come when Pastor Andy will be full-time in the ministry. How many want that? Good. And he's got to be paid. Now when he's paid, if he's, I mean when I buy petrol or gas, what do you call it here? Gas. Okay. When I go to the gas station and I buy gas, I don't say in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Ghost, I speak divine oracles against you. I release the petrol into my car free of charge and so on. No, I pay. Just like anybody else. Is that not so? And so when a pastor works, he has to be paid just like anybody else. Amen. And you have a whole lot of criticisms about pastors when they are being paid. You have that in Toronto. Is that in all nations church? They're always criticizing a pastor, accusing him of this and of that. And also all the other churches. Pastors are accused all the time. It's part of our work to be accused. So, when you are paid by the church, you see now, Pastor Andy doesn't, he's not paid by the church, he's not paying a dime or a dollar. So, when he works, nobody has a problem because he's doing the work and he's working in the secular field. So, nobody has a problem. But we, we're going to have to have a church which is able to pay. And you need a big church to be able to do that without all sorts of struggle. Amen. Pastor Kojo Frimpong from Vancouver is also going to need to be full time one day. Work for the Lord. Amen. How many think it would be better if people are all out sold to the Lord, not just evening sold. They are sold out in the evening. They are sold out during the day. Yesterday when Pastor Ali picked me from the airport, you know, he was there and he had to, I think his boss called him or he called his boss and he had to just leave me. He, he abandoned me in the middle of the city. <laughs> he, he, didn't, he didn't even get me home. <laughs> he abandoned me in the middle of the city. He had, his boss called him <laughs> and he had to go. He, I gotta go, I gotta go. <laughs> and he went. I believe that Pastor Larry you know, Pastor Larry is studying uh, well, computers now. <laughs> and you know, the guys who do computers are the richest guys in the world now. Bill Gates and all his uh, assistants. They are all rich people. So when you do computers, 
you know, you get money. And so Brother Larry is doing that so he can get more money. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, when one day he's going to be full time in the ministry, he's going to be able to have enough money to live. You can't tell people just because you're full time, don't live. I have children. I have children who go to school. I have to pay. The church doesn't pay my children's school. I pay my own school fees myself. Amen. I buy petrol myself. Gas myself. You get it? So you, you need, and I believe that Canada needs people who are going to be in the ministry. But when the church is bigger, our income will be more. These things will be small problems. Small problems. Because you're still going to need to buy a church building. How much is a building here? A million dollars? There about. A million dollars. And we're going to need a lot of money. And we can't do that with 20 people. 20 people can't raise a million dollars here. Very easily. Take many, many years. 30 year mortgage. But God is going to do it. Then the Millionaire's Club would also be there in a mega church. Is that not so? To cater for a whole lot of things. I want you to pray for your pastors. Everybody pray for your pastors that God will help them one day to be full-time workers. Father, in Jesus' name, help them to be full-time ministers one day. Open the door in Canada for them to live for you fully and work for you fully. In Jesus' name, amen. Powerful. The next reason why we must have a a ministry is because um, you have more relationships and then more marriages. Have you had any weddings yet? No wedding in Toronto. Wow. I'll be no weddings yet. Vancouver, you've had one. Mm. How many want more weddings in the church? You must have weddings. And beloveds. When there is a mega church, there will be more beloveds. More relationships, more marriages, and more marital quarrels. <laughs> it's part of the package. <laughs> One day, a sister came. I spoke. I spoke to her. I said, "Sister, why are you not getting married?" And she said to me, Pastor, my type is not in the church. And I said, Your type? Who are you? What type are you? What do you mean by your type is not in the church? You know? And I rebuked her very sharply. Because our church was very small. <laughs> so when she went away, I thought about it and I said, it's true. Her time, <laughs> her time is not in the church. <laughs> her time, because the way she was, she needed a particular type of person to marry her. Everybody needs a type. So I rebuked her sharply, but because our church was small, there were not many types. <laughs> but when you have a mega church, all time. If you want it short, you have a short one. If you want it tall, you have tall. If you want it fast, you have fast. If you want it big, small, medium size, extra large, whatever. <laughs> white, black, blue. I spoke to a certain brother. He said to me, I want to marry a white lady. I said, no problem. You are in a mega church. <laughs> I mean, he was way down in Cape Coast. He said he wanted to marry. (laughs) 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 He has a dream. (laughs) His dream will come to pass. I said, we have a lot of white people in Zurich, so you can come there. You see, in a mega church, you've got a choice. Yeah. I said, you've got a choice. Yeah. Now, if, for instance, we wanted to get married here, okay, 
among the sisters who are not married, the brothers who are not married. Okay, who are the brothers who are not married? We have Sami. So Sami, we pair Sami with Na. So she here. We have John. I'm just taking the nearest person to that. John with Nadia. Uh, what's his name at the back there? David with uh, Didi here. Susan with, uh, uh, what's his name? With, uh, William. And uh, Su- uh, Susan with William and Joyce with Ben. Uh-huh, it worked out well. <laughs> <laughs> you get it? So, and then we have some people who are left over. Now, Ben may not like his choice. Or uh, David may not like his choice. But maybe because there's no choice. He's got to settle. Then later on in the night, one day he'll say, you know, I never really loved you. <laughs> oh yeah, it happened. I saw somebody, you know, in one of our churches, person was saying, you know, I never really loved her. Him. And all sorts of things. I said, man, what are you saying? Said, man, don't say that. I never really loved him. I never really loved her. I heard some other person say, I never really loved her. You know, after getting married and having children, he said, I never really loved her. Nonsense. Rubbish. Foolish. Stop that rub there. <laughs> Nonsense. You never really loved her. So you married her. You talked to her like, oh, many times. She has agreed. Ten years have gone by. And it was not what I thought it was. What did you think it was? But it happened. It happened. It happened. That's why you got to be careful. Amen. Amen. That's why you got to have a choice. So that when you choose, you say, okay, I had a choice and I chose this. Amen. Amen. So God is giving us a mega church. Soon you are going to have a lot of weddings. Well, as soon as the door opens for weddings, it's going to begin to flow like a river. I tell you, when our church began, weddings were special convention. It was unusual to have a wedding. I used to come myself. I helped to train the, uh, the page boy and the flower girl. I did all that. I helped to clean the floor, clean the building. I helped to decorate everything. I was there throughout. Did the vows with the people. Taught them everything. Did counsel. Everything I was involved. Came very early. Now the church has grown so big. I don't even know when people are getting married. I come to church on Sunday and I look to the right and I see some people wearing white and this and that. People got married yesterday. And I ask, who, who, who got married yesterday? <laughs> How many weddings? Three. I don't even know them. I only go to the weddings I know the people. So I don't know. I don't know. I don't go. I don't know so many people in the church now. I don't know many people in the church. <laughs> I mean, that's the reality. The reality is I don't know me. They know me, but I don't know them. We know each other spiritually. <laughs> I don't know their names. How can I know all the names of the people? You get it? So when God blesses the church, the mega church, People will marry. And they will marry from all corners. One brother, he couldn't find a wife in Ghana. So he found a wife in South Africa. As you see, there was a good sister in South Africa who was one of the main worship leaders doing, and he was also a main brother here. He said, Man, what do you think? This brother said, This pastor said, Oh, yes, this one is our You know, but they get it married. <laughs> they get it married. Because sometimes some people want to marry from outside. Yeah. You got a choice. You got a choice. Hey, Amen. Yeah. Sandra, does this, sound, does this sound good? Yeah? Sandra, do you have a beloved? All right. So we can find one. For, we can scan the whole world. <laughs> And we can get one for you. Amen. Amen. How many are thankful for a mega church? How many want a more mega church? And God is going to do it. He will do it. More marriages. Let's stand to our feet and just say, When the Lord brought us back 
and restored our freedom. We felt so good. Dreaming how we laughed, how we sang, we were overflowing. Then we heard, look what the Lord, look what the Lord the Lord has a great things for us, and we are filled with joy. The Lord has a great things for us, and we are filled with joy, with joy, oh, with joy. Oh, 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 when